Hello, I'm Mark Baer. Welcome to Your Town Television. My guest, artist Greg Hawthorne, and okay. welcome. Well, thank you. So cool. this is uh, this is really an honor. You've been on the uh, peninsula for a long time. You're a figure, and uh, you know you're an icon in Big Sur with the Hawthorne Gallery, and uh, also in 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 Sand City. And uh, your uh, art is great. Let's uh, let's start at the beginning. Uh, so you came from Michigan, right? Um, you'd always wanted to. Do, I oh, guess I guess you always wanted to be an artist. So let's let's just talk about the beginnings. Yeah, when I was a little kid, I, I my father's an architect. My grandfather is a furniture maker, and my other grandfather was a designer. So uh, in our family, art was central to the whole our whole lifestyle, and. Um, so every, when I was a little kid, I always was drawing or doing something, and it was the only way to keep the nuns from pounding on me. I would uh, do a drawing. They just thought it was really great, and uh, I was not really quite the reader that I should have been, but uh, I was uh, great at drawing. So uh, it was amazing. They would just uh, w uh, nuns love music and they love uh, the arts, and so that's what uh, made me happy. And I was. It was very simple for me at the time, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. But my father was very critical. You know, I bring things home to him, and he'd look at it, and the nuns would give me an A, and he'd say, "Well, uh, that's not really good enough. You need to work much harder." So he was a, a pretty much a taskmaster on the arts and so forth. And then when I'd get a project, I'd, I'd do it for the nuns, and again I would get an A, and then I bring it back, and he said, "Well, we got to do that over because it's not good enough." We need to, uh, you know, one time I did a, a model for a monastery, and so we did, uh, it was interesting. I brought it back to show them, and I would use my Lionel train uh, uh, trees, and I did, uh, you know, made this thing. I thought it was really cool, and then uh, they thought it was great, and they wanted me to make a bigger one to be sh uh, displayed at the school entry, you know, when they come in. So anyway, he... I brought it back to him, and he said, "I said they think it's really great." He said, "Well, they don't know what they're they're talking about." And I said, "And so he took me to meet the big model maker for uh, his, uh, his architectural firm, and uh, Pinky Weaver." Pinky and, Weaver. And <laughs> Pinky Weaver was uh, really an interesting guy. Uh, he, uh, I think, he drank more than he worked, but it was uh, to see his models were. They were uh, sensational. So he showed me all these things and what to do and, and how to make some cool models. And my dad came back and he supervised me making all these uh, different cuts. And, and it, it was really far out. It looked like something a college kid would do because it was you know a much higher end. And we had little little cars that uh, we made, and then they had the the rows for the where they would park. And um, I turned it in, and the nuns told me, "Well, that's too good. Your father did that for you. You didn't do that." You know, so, you know, I was getting on one end. I was getting, you know, this thing that it wasn't good enough, and then on the other end, it's too good. So then, you know, then it was just kind of a little bit of a problem. But uh, it was a great background. Wow. So did you? Uh, you were kind of destined to be an artist. Did you ever consider other lines of work, or how, well, how did I would, that develop? Well, I was. I always wanted to be an artist, but. Again, my father, when I would say, well, I want to be an artist, and he said, well, most artists can't make a living even when they're good, you know, hinting that I wasn't any good. So, but one of the greatest things in life is to prove your parents wrong, obviously, as a kid when you, you're, you're going to do this. But I was 58 on the lottery for Vietnam. So uh, when I went to school, college, I was uh, actually a good student. I had uh, good grades. And uh, they s I picked pre-med. So pre-med was the longest curriculum, and I figured I could get in a mash unit. If the war kept going, I could put guys back together again rather than shooting them. So I thought that was a good concept. But uh, in 19, I think it was 1971, they ended the draft, and I was ready to take my MCATs, and I came back and told everybody at the house, I'm going to try to be an artist. If I can't make it, I'll just go back into med school. Was, was your dad encouraging you into architecture, or where was he? He wanted you? me to be an architect, uh -huh. and I didn't want to be an architect. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I just, you know, buildings are great and design is great, and all you architects out there, I'm sure that, uh, uh, you know, that's a very special skill. But for me, it was, 
too confining. I'd have to build things that other people wanted, and I didn't have enough. I obviously had no money, so I wasn't going to build the things I wanted. I was going to build the things for other people, and that that stretch just did not interest me. I wanted to do sculpture and painting and and everything else, and uh, I just wanted to go for it. I had no uh, classes. I mean, I went to uh, had a class in high school, and uh, that's where I had one art class, and I was going to build a career on one art class. So that was kind of an interesting. But approach. you kind of inside, you internally, you knew yeah, you're, no, you're, 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 you're where you're going. Um, funnily enough, though, when y I look at your work, especially you know just seeing it for the first time when I um, that I that I was cognizant of it, uh, walking into your your house in San City, and what didn't have enough time to look at the artistry but the design element and the architectural element are so strong so you must have really absorbed those those lessons well it's uh, you know and you, it's kind of like if you're going to play a violin if you can't hear a tune it's not going to work so if you're going to be an artist if you don't have no concept it, you don't have to be a great uh, you know illustrator or anything but you have to have uh, freedom of your spirit your freedom uh, not afraid to fail you have to be uh, approach it on an idea that you're just going to work at it and come up with your own voice, you know, and and, uh, and so that's the the main thing. What I I did is I went to the library and took out every art book I could get, and I would just bring back stacks of them, and I was carrying them home. How old are we now? Uh, so I was I graduated from school at 21, college at 21, and. Uh, I just went right into it. I mean, I was making, st I was showing on the street, I was showing any place that people would look at it and buy it. I never had a job. I had a job uh, driving rock groups for six months uh, with uh, limousine companies at night so that I could uh, paint during the day. And that, so after six months, I was able to make my living uh, as a painter. But I would just go any place, any place people would buy art. It didn't really matter to me. I, you know, I was invited to people's houses and they had like a Tupperware party for me of art and I'd bring it in, I was the entertainment and I'd just put my stuff on the walls and or around and then people would buy the pieces from me and uh, I w it was really fun, it was, a, it was a great experience. I was really young, I got married very young, my wife uh, Susan and I had been married uh, for 45 years starting uh, this September but we, um, she was 19 when we got married and I was 22 and um, we just didn't care. We just, uh, she was a uh, hired, she was still in college, and then once she got in college, she was a graphic artist, and she was hired right away, first day. She re, uh, graduated on Friday and was hired on Monday. And so, you know, that was not a problem. And then she was uh, working as a teacher for a while, and she did that for three years and then retired, and then worked for me. And uh, so, because we were traveling to different shows, I went to New York, Chicago, Miami, any place. That I could sell the artwork. I mean, and I was painting. Uh, sometimes she'd be driving the van, and I'd be painting inside the van to finish the last piece before. So I her, just before we move on, I mean, her her contribution, and her, I mean, you guys have a real partnership. Right. This would have been very, and and she had belief in you, and still has great right. belief. Right. And that that's uh, that's something. Oh no, it's that, that's that's a that's a beautiful story. Um, and the, the passion. So when you're 21, 22, you must be you're you must be growing very fast in the art. Oh yeah, no, I'm 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 learning so much because I am producing. I'm working seven days a week. I'm painting, and and at the time I was only a painter, and so I'm painting and I'm buying big sheets of masonite and then cutting them and then painting them and as fast as I possibly can, and um, just. You know, just really learning each day, you know, because I was so hungry to learn about mm -hmm. it that it was, um, and then I would get critiques by other artists and, you know, we'd come over and, you know, I'd invite them over for uh, drinks and, and uh, you know, they'd sit around and look at the new pieces and then tell me what they thought and then I'd invite much older artists than myself and then they would come in and give me critiques and that was, that was great. So uh, then there's kind of, let's talk about the kind of subtle shift of your success. What, you know, the, the first pieces sold and what, what were the turning points as we, as we move along this? Well, in the, ter the most important thing to me was to be able to make a living at it. If I could make a living, then I could do it all the time. And once I could do it all the time, then I would get better and then I would, you know, the, the fame thing when, 
young artists start to think of fame before they've done any work, uh, they might as well quit. They're not going any place. It's, uh, it's not about fame. It's about doing the best work you can and as often as you can. That's, that's really what and I tell young artists. It's the same thing. You just plan on just working all the time and enjoy the fact that people love your work and that uh, if they don't, maybe a couple years later when they catch on, they'll like it. I, you know, I do some series that um, you know, people, I think they're terrific and then all of a sudden you know, they're not selling. Other pieces are selling. I'm always having something that you know, is people can understand, but you know, some of the new pieces, they look at it and go, oh, great, that's a little far out or whatever, and then two or three years later, they're hot, you know, people like them. So that's what I always, I'm always striving to keep it interesting and keep it exciting. So yesterday I asked you, uh, do you, if, if you, if something works, do you ever want to, like, repaint it, or do you, are you thinking of an audience when you're painting? And you said, no, I'm thinking of myself, because the kick of it is, right. is that you're, you want to knock yourself out. Yes, if I can impress myself, yeah. you know, I'm pretty critical, and, uh, you know, my wife's very critical, and you know, every, you know, and my kids now are are all critics. I mean, you know, they all come in and they'll go, "Dad, I really like that," you know, or, or "Dad, that's a little bit out there," you know. And uh, so, I mean, it's <coughs> it's great to get feedback now from the next generation too, as well as as my wife and myself. If I can make all those four people, there's you know, my son, my daughter, my wife, and I very happy, then that's a great great thing. First of all, I have to make myself excited about it. And making myself excited is, is a little more difficult than uh, just about anybody. Yeah, because the bar is higher as, as, as you go, right. and you're, you're still cranking it out, you're still oh, yeah. showing up, you're still doing the work, right. and um, it never gets easier, I'm sure. Well, it gets easier from the financial standpoint, yes. but it doesn't get easier on trying to impress yourself. I mean, that's, that's a more difficult. Yeah. So do you feel you're still on a growing learning? Oh, sure. Yes, that's, yeah. that's, cause yeah, well, I, I guess, and, and I guess if that stopped, then it's, it, then it's, that it would be a, you're a, dead. A, a, a grueling job. Well, no, it would, be, it would be, if it stops, then you're dead. You yeah. Know, you know, yeah. So you might as, you know, um, I, I met, uh, I've known for many years, Barbara Spring, and we used to, sh we showed her at the gallery, and she died at 94. And she worked right up until she died, and 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 she told me, as soon as I can't do another piece, I'm going to die. And you know, I said, hey, well, don't be such a fatalist. You know, there's, you might have decide to go on a long cruise or something. She said, no, it's uh, about doing the work. Yeah, that's beautiful. So the other uh, part of what you've achieved, let's let's talk about being an art entrepreneur. And that's these are, you know, this isn't. You know, we have this myth that the the artist is supposed to succeed. Uh, there, there's this romance of the you know the the, the struggling artist, the uh, you know the down and out artist, and he's supposed to die, and he's not supposed to make any money, and blah blah blah. And that's a crummy myth. And well, uh, well it's a pretty lousy myth actually. <laughs> the, uh, uh, Picasso kind of blew that myth right yeah. out, of the, out of the ground. There's I mean there's different artists that are around uh, in the modern world. Obviously Andy Warhol. Uh, did extre extremely well. Um, Stella has done done extremely well. I, I love love his work, and uh, there's many artists that I can go right through that are successful within their own right. But they worked really hard. You can look at all their their, their production of pieces, and you know, um, and there's a difference between a pro and an amateur. An amateur is somebody that really loves to do the work, but they don't make their living out of it, and, it, and, it, and that's great. They can spend a year doing a painting or a, a piece of sculpture, and some of them are pretty fantastic when they're done, but that's one. You know, a pro has to do it a lot, and he has to be able to, it's, it's a skill, you know, it's uh, whether you're an Albert Paley or a, you know, one of the, who's very, the sculpture that he does is spectacular, and his furniture pieces are amazing. And I think that all of us, need to, you need, you, just because you say that you put a Band-Aid on somebody, it doesn't make you a doctor. Just because you, you write a will doesn't make you a lawyer. Doing a painting doesn't make you an artist. An artist is somebody that, I mean, you can be an artist in your own spirit, but I'm not talking about that. But being a pro, it takes way more work than that. And most people have to understand that there's a lot of, a lot of 
parts to being an artist. It's not only that you do the drawing, you finish the piece, it has to be framed or some type of, it has to be sh sold, it has to be shipped. I mean, it, the, there's a lot of different levels that have to be done uh, when a piece of art. And for somebody to do all those pieces, you have to put a whole group of people together to make sure that all that stuff is done right. Yeah, it's not a lonely man on an island dropped out to no, do No, I mean, thing. that's a romantic idea, yeah, yeah. But, it's, uh, but it doesn't really and, work. And the reality, especially the reality that you've created, is more romantic than any of those things because let's talk about the Hawthorne Gallery and the evolution of this because you, you've incorporated lifestyle into your art. You've built basically almost a... A, ch a chapel for your art and the other artists that you bring in. And when you walk into the Hawthorne Gallery in Big Sur, you're walking into a very sacred, secular space. It's it's absolutely gorgeous, and it's it's built in terms of working with the nature around you. The the colors your your palette um, reflects the world that you live in. Right. Uh, well, what, what it is is that we've, you know, we uh, when we were living in Michigan uh, at the time and. And I, my assistant, uh, we called him Mr. Mike, and uh, Susan, and at the time I had, my son was one, he's 37 now, or 39 now, yeah. Uh, so time goes fast when you're having fun. And um, so anyway, he, uh, no, he's 37, my daughter's 29, I should get this correct, you know, but the, <laughs> the, uh, Anyway, when he was a, a little guy, and, and my wife and, uh, said to me, you know, we need to, uh, we need to go someplace else. This is not this this is not working. In Lansing, Michigan, is where we were living, and uh, I had a we had a beautiful house. It was uh, cedar with cedar, twelve inch cedar boards, and it was just gorgeous. And we had a hot tub and a screened in a gazebo porch, and you know, brick floors, and it was it was really a, a beautiful place. And so we're sitting in the hot tub, and at the time I was uh, about 27, 28, and uh, she was uh, she's three years younger than I am. And uh, I said, it doesn't get any better than this. And she looked at me, she says, yes, it does. And I said, what do you mean? She said, sitting on the side of a mountain looking out over the ocean is better than this. I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Television Program. I'm with Greg Hawthorne, and after this short break, we'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.